Now, just like I mentioned all the great benefits of using the links panel in the previous tutorial, one of the other great things about links is they are linked to the applications that you created your photos with in the first place. So if I go to open up uh, the next tutorial here in chapter four, folder 11, I'm gonna open up this simple photo page. I got a simple backdrop and here's what you wanna watch out for. Notice I can click on this box. You do not want to do that, okay? If I'm trying to add a photo on top, watch what happens here. I'm gonna click outside command D for a document and I'm going to go to folder 11 editing in Photoshop as soon as I click notice he gets stuck inside this box I didn't want him in this box maybe I want him running halfway out but if I clicked right here and tried to move him he's stuck inside that box that's bad so I'm going to delete that okay when I want to put a photo floating above this, not trapped in this, I'm going to make a brand new layer. This box should get its own layer. In fact, I can double click the name and call that uh, gradient background. And I will lock that layer. I don't want to accidentally put anything inside of this box. I will create another brand new layer and call this my photo. Now when I hit command D for a document, I'll open up this photo, click. Now I have room to move him about anywhere I want on the page, even going right off the page if I wanted to, but I have more creative freedom. Okay, so let's say I've got this photo, I'll hit W but I really want to show him as a black and white image. Let's say we're doing a little ad for my Ninja Turtles and we're going with the original Ninja Turtles who are all black and white. Well, I don't have a black and white photo, I have a color photo. So when I click here and I go to my links panel, right over here, I'll pull this out so you can see it. We'll pull this edge down. It says it's a Photoshop file, .psd, a file with no background to it. The beautiful thing is I can click outside, click once on a photo, and now if I hold my option key and double click on a Photoshop file, it takes me right back into Photoshop. Let's just bring that back on my screen here. There we go. Now I'm back in the file that it came from, Photoshop. So if I wanted to see what a black and white image would look like, I hit command J. I'm going to go command J duplicates the layer. Now I can go to image adjustments. Uh, it's not giving me black and white and that's because that's a CMYK image. So let's change the image mode to RGB. Don't merge my layers. Now in RGB mode, image adjustments, black and white. That looks way too dark. So I know his skin tone had a lot of green, so we'll make the greens brighter. We have a little bit of yellow in them. There we go. Make his reds a little darker. Eh, let's go light. Oh boy. Oh, that looks better. All right. All right, make the light blues. There we go. So now I got a black and white version of this okay if i hit command s save my progress and now i close photoshop click once right here to come back to indesign boom the link automatically updates so now i can show a customer hey i'm going back with the ninja turtles from 1984 they're black and white and like so we're not making black and white toys what do you do you just ruined our ad these are colorful toys. What are you doing? Like, hold on, hold on. Option double click. Throw away the top layer. Command S to save. Now when I close up the Photoshop file, click here, boom. 
instant updates. That is what's great about links with Photoshop. Click, option double click, as long as it is a Photoshop document. If that was a uh, JPEG, wouldn't work. There's a different way to edit JPEGs. But if it is a Photoshop document, you can instantly jump by option double clicking. Huge way to save time with your links jumping back and forth between programs. I love that feature in InDesign.